I'm Larry Walther. This is PrinciplesofAccounting.com, Chapter 11. In this module, we will consider the accounting for asset impairments. Now, what is an asset impairment? It, an asset impairment generally is regarded as a situation where the carrying amount of a long-lived asset, such as property, plant, and equipment, is not recoverable from its expected future cash flows. In those cases, a loss must be recognized for the amount necessary to reduce the asset to its fair value. And the revised carrying amount establishes a new accounting basis that will then be depreciated going forward into the future. So it is a revaluation of an asset downward to reflect its fair value. Factors that would be considered in determining whether an impairment has occurred include there has been a significant decrease in the market value of an asset, the physical condition of the asset has deteriorated unexpectedly, the asset is no longer being used as intended, legal or regulatory issues have impeded the asset in some way, there may be cost overruns that are associated with the asset's acquisition. The overall business performance seems threatened by unsuccessful performance. Or finally, the asset is now expected to be disposed of ahead of anticipated schedule. I would point out that this is the USA approach that focuses first on cash recovery. If an asset's cost will be recovered through future cash flows, it is not deemed to be impaired. This is different than the global standards, that look more to a restrictive fair value test is the fair value of the asset less than the carrying amount, in which case uh, a loss might be implied or suggested. Sometimes a company that is in trouble or having a bad year may consider taking a bath. It's used to characterize significant one-time charges to write off impairment losses. This usually occurs when a business has gone through a significant down period and is struggling to regain its footing. Management has an incentive to write off assets in this case. The logic may be that things are already bad, so writing off additional assets won't cause any additional harm. More importantly, with the assets being written off, futures income can be expected to be buoyed because it will be avoiding depreciation charges that would be otherwise have been associated with the assets that were written off. So this idea of taking a bath is sometimes seen as an opportunistic uh, situation where assets are written off to enhance future income. Importantly, however, this idea of taking a bath is not sanctioned by generally accepted accounting principles. We default and gap to the impairment test that I've just discussed, and impairments should generally be recognized only when supported by the underlying economic facts.